Thank you, Megan. The gospel for this Sunday morning is from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, beginning at the first verse. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. Look, here is the place. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. And there you will see him, just as he told you. Here ends the gospel. I want to read a story to you. Um, this is a story told by Dr. Um, Murdo McDonald. He was a chaplain for American prisoners of war during World War II. And I guess he was greatly loved by the soldiers, uh, helping them keep hope in a most terrible and awful time in their lives. He told about how he learned about the invasion of Normandy and of D-Day. Early in the morning, an American shook him awake, shouting into his ears, the Scotsman wants to see you. It's terribly important. McDonald says that he ran over to the barbed wire fence that separated the British and the American camps, where McNeil, who was in touch with the BBC by underground radio, was waiting for him. He spoke just a few words in Gaelic. They have come. McDonald then ran back to the American camp and began waking up the soldiers. He said again and again, they have come, they have come. The reaction was incredible. Men jumped up and started to shout. They hugged each other. They ran outdoors. They rolled on the ground in joy. The Germans thought they were crazy. They were still prisoners. Nothing had outwardly changed. Inwardly, however, they knew that everything was different. It's a resurrection story. When you and I think about the resurrection and, and all the implications of it and all we've heard about it and the way it's read about in scripture and uh, some ideas that people have about those who have passed on and the ideas of eternal life and life after death, the stories get kind of complicated and a bit confusing because everybody thinks of that particular gospel lesson differently. But this was a resurrection story too. They knew everything was different. And on CNN this week, there was a, they have a section uh, on CNN News called The Hero Stories. I think it's something like that. And I caught just a part of it, but what I caught was very interesting to me. There's a Navy captain, a retired Navy captain, who served his last tour of duty at a hospital where the wounded from Iraq and Afghanistan are sent. And so they panned around the hospital rooms, and there you see men who've lost their legs, men who are blind, women who have only one arm, um, women who've been uh, otherwise hit by those roadside bombs, and all kinds of those sorts of wounds. You, you've seen the pictures. Um, the damage to these people is, first of all, physical, but it's also uh, mental damage, spiritual damage. Their souls have been damaged by this. And so this captain started a fly fishing program for the disabled, for veterans, those whose spirits had been broken. And one of the things he loved was fly fishing. And for those of you who are fishermen and women, um, you often talk to me about this and how it's wonderful to be out on the lake or the river and be in the calm surroundings of Mother Nature and do this thing that you love. Well, this captain thought that the peaceful and graceful time on the water has a healing effect. And one vet was interviewed. This was a veteran who had been hit by a roadside bomb. 
and he'd lost an eye, and part of his face was badly damaged, and he'd lost part of one leg. And he had gone through lots of reconstructive surgery, and he said, you know, I thought life was over, and now I know it's just beginning. See, that's a resurrection story, too, as powerful as any you will ever hear. And in the gospel story this morning, every time preachers get ready for Easter, you know, this is the worst Sunday to preach. Do you know that? Because, first of all, a lot of people here are going to be visitors, and we want to make a good impression with our church and everything, so we're very nervous about it. And also, I had advice from a, a seminary president um, who was a rather odd man himself. He was getting ready to retire, and some of the advice that he gave us seminarians, I could have done without. And uh, you've all worked with or for or around people like that, I know. He said to me one time, I was being sent out to preach an Easter sermon in a church that didn't have a minister, and he said, this is the most important sermon you'll ever preach. <laughs> well, thanks for that. I wasn't nervous enough. Now I'm really nervous. And so I think most preachers think that on Easter, it has to be very profound, and people just need to go away and think, Wow, is that something. I'm sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> I'll do the best I can, but I don't have a lot of wow, is that something sermons. But at any rate, in the gospel story, when I'm reading this story to get the sermon ready, there's a curious thing in this story. And that is, after Jesus is raised, he goes home. On the first day of his eternal life, he goes home. Why? Why did he just go home? We're told that he returned to Galilee in the scripture lesson. He just went home. William Willimon, who is a preacher at uh, Duke University and now a Methodist bishop, he wrote a sermon about this and he said, he wrote a couple of instances of uh, his talking to parishioners or his talking to students after a terrible point in their life. And he superimposes this on this idea of Jesus just going home. And one of his parishioners said, when I get out of this hospital bed and I can move again, the first thing I'm going to do is fly out to Pebble Beach and play the golf course. I've always dreamed about it. And now when I get over this, that's what I want to do more than anything else in the world, his parishioner said to him. That sounds like a very good plan to me and to anybody else who plays golf in this room. And another person said to him, when I get out of this jail, the first thing I'm going to do is go to New York. I've never been there. I'm going to see the sights. I'm going to do some things I've never done before when I get out of this jail. That's what she said to him. 